The winningest team in program history puts number two Shelby on center stage in the Division II Regional Semifinals right here at Bowling Green State University tonight where Mr. Ohio finalist Alex Bruscotter and the streaking whippets go for 18 straight wins against sensational sophomore Beckett Berkey and district champion Lima Shawnee as our presentation of Sweet 16 Boys Hoops comes at you live and free from the Stroh Center and it's all on the way. Next. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. More than Crown, we are the real people behind Crown CDJR of Dublin. Every member of our sales team is dedicated to providing you an excellent customer experience. Find the right vehicle for you and your lifestyle. Visit Crown Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram today. The better way to buy. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hockenberry Trucking and Excavating pregame show. Shelby and Shawnee meeting for the second time since 2021 for a spot in the Division II Elite Eight. I'm Brian Skronsky, the great Mark Bullinger is with me here tonight in big time high school basketball on a big time stage here at Bowling Green. I mean, for me, buddy, it don't get a whole lot better than this. This is exactly what coaches and players dream of at the beginning of the season, a chance to get to regional play, and you're eight quarters away from making it to Dayton in the Final Four. Let's tell you about Lima Shawnee and their season so far, chalking up 19 victories, and they played a, played a, ga a pair of tight games, I should say, at districts. The Indians right now, though, enjoying their best stretch of the season by far, Mark. Winners of eight straight, 10 of their last 11. So they're starting to get a little momentum here on the big stage. Well, they're getting some momentum, and they're such a young group that you're starting to see them play their best basketball at the end of the year. They're led by two young players, the Berkey brothers. One's a sophomore, one is a freshman. And as the years went on, they've just gotten better and better, starting to understand their roles. And as you said, they've won eight straight. And they played in a good conference, played some good non-league teams as well. So they're coming in here tonight prepared and ready to play an outstanding Shelby ball yeah, club. Yeah, have not dropped a contest since early February in a game against Ottawa Glandorf, who also will be competing for a regional championship right here at BG, coming up here in just a couple of days. 
You mentioned Beckett Berkey, the sophomore. Incredible efficiency for a dude this young. 51% from the field mark, 75% from the line, 36% from beyond the arc, and nearly averaging a double-double. So it's rare that at the Division II level you'll find a kid this young that's grown into quite the stat-stuffing monster that he is. And the most difficult thing about him is he can do it all. He can handle the ball. He can play on the wing. He can take you into the post. So he is a, a nightmare for teams trying to match up with him. I'm guessing we're going to see Isaiah Ramsey go to him tonight. But for a lot of teams, you don't have guys that can guard somebody and play the one through the five like Berkey. So we'll see if Ramsey gets that matchup tonight. But Berkey is definitely a good one. Yeah, I'd say unquestionably Isaiah is probably going to be masked up with him. He's been taking the lead dog for the other team all tournament. Uh, the WBL, really good league. We talked about that only loss coming to OG 55-41 back on February the 9th and they had several tight victories within the league. So what that proved to me when I was looking at their schedule is that this is a team, they, they know how to win when the game's on the line in crunch time. And, and again, that is what has been so impressive because of the youth of this club, that they've been able to win a lot of those close games. They have challenged themselves. You look at the WBL, outstanding league. Of course, Ottawa Glandorf at the top. But in addition to that, as we said, they went outside the league. They played the top three teams in the MAC this year. They played St. John's. They played St. Henry. They played Coldwater. So they've challenged themselves, and they've learned how to win these close games. And tonight, if they're going to win, I think it's going to be a close one because you're not going to blow out this Shelby ball club. And speaking of Shelby, enjoying the most victorious season ever. They've been playing basketball just about as long as anybody here in the great Buckeye State passing the 1956-57 squad led by Ohio State slash Boston Celtics great Larry Siegfried. Uh, and all they've done since the calendar flipped to 2024 is win Mark still undefeated. Got the longest winning streak right now in the state. Not too bad of a run here, you know. I mean, th and they've, they've had a few tight games and stuff like that, but the reality is this group has really come together. And, and I think you've seen the development of, of Shelby as well. At the beginning of the year, I think a little bit of it was they were just waiting for Alex Bruscotter to make plays. As the years went on, you've seen these guys get a little bit more comfortable, starting to play their roles, starting to be a little bit more aggressive. And as they have done that, man, have they become really, really good. And you already talked about Isaiah Ramsey. That's going to be our player spotlight tonight because this kid, he just packs such immense value, I think, on the floor at both ends. Solid offensive threat. He can make threes, but he really excels as the lockdown guy. He targets the best offensive weapon on the other side, and typically he can neutralize them. Well, as, as we talked about off the air before the game, no disrespect to anybody else, but if you're a coach, Isaiah Ramsey is the kind of guy that you want that you would start a team with. You know he's going to get it done on the defensive end. He's going to lock down, take the other team's best player. You know he's going to get it done on the offensive end. He can go rebound. He can get putbacks. He can create for himself. And he's the ultimate teammate, the exact kind of guy that you want out there on the court with you tonight. That guy hates to lose. He is going to compete every possession. And they won the MOAC for the fifth consecutive season. And this senior class had a big hand in the last four. A lot of these guys here, Mark, they've been competing for the last few years. So really impressive to see that. And we'll now pause for a moment. Honor America. And then we'll get you ready for regional action. Shout out to the Shelby Pep Band here in the building tonight. 
bringing us into the evening with the National Anthem Star Spangled Banner action. And that honestly is one of the best parts about just any high school game, Mark, is when, when you get the atmosphere fully charged up, I think the pep band got a lot to do with it. Well, you love the pep band, you love the support from the student section, and of course you're gonna have the parents in the community, and Shelby is well represented tonight as the Red Rage is here and they're ready to get going. Yeah, I, th I think I would argue that maybe the best student section that we have in North Central Ohio, a lot of bit debate them, the Purple Haze, uh, the Ozone over at Ontario, but for my money, the Red Rage is where it is at. So the winner tonight is going to move on to face state number one, Lutheran West, who knocked off Toledo Central Catholic just about an hour ago here, Mark. And really, we could be setting the stage on Saturday if, the, if Shelby were to advance. Number one versus number two in the state in the Elite Eight. I mean, uh, it's already got me salivating just thinking about that. Well, that Lutheran West Ball Club was a really nice team. They pulled away in the second half. They were able to take down the Toledo Central Catholic team 54 to 30. But the reality is, is they weren't as dominant maybe as a lot of people expected. You know, we weren't the only ones sitting here watching. And, and I guess when you're number one and, and the schedule they've played and the reputation, you, you had expectations. They are really, really good. But I think it's a great matchup. If Shelby can take care of business tonight, I think Shelby has the size, athleticism, and can do some things that I think that they're going to give them a ball game on Saturday. But for Shelby, let's take care of Shawnee first. Yeah, there's a big challenge in their way because the last two times that Shelby has got onto the regional stage, they've ran into Lima Shawnee both times. The Whippets went back and they went back home season over. This is the first time I feel like they sense that they're the favorite coming into this competition and all that size that you were talking about, they can defend all over the floor with great length, Mark. So obviously that's a huge feather in the cap of the Whippets. Yes, and, and they look really, really relaxed. Watching them out here in pregame, they look like they're relaxed, they were having fun. Still business-like, but seemed like they were loose and ready to go. So I expect the nerves are kind of out of the way, and I think Shelby's going to come out and get off to a good start. Let's now dive into our keys to the game, presented by Hockenberry Trucking and Excavating. As the Shawnee starters being announced here on the floor. And I think we're doing their keys first. Let's find out. It's the exact same colors. That's usually how I figured out. No, how about Shelby? So experience matters, okay? Four seniors. Most of them are multi-year starters. You've got to continue that revenge tour. They knocked off Mansfield Senior, who put him out of the tournament a couple of years ago. They knocked off Lexington, who took him out last year. And then three years ago, it was Lima Shawnee who ended their tournament run. So it just seems like they've got a hit list. So far, they've been capitalizing. I think the senior class gets it done tonight. I like it. I'm going to go with the balanced scoring attack. As I talked about, as the years went on, you've seen the emergence of other players. The talent has been there, but the Ramseys, the, the DeVitos, those kinds of guys, the Lances, they have really picked it up, and the people are playing their role. They're being more aggressive on the offensive end. I think you're going to see a more balanced Shelby attack tonight, and I think that's going to cause Shawnee a lot of trouble. But for the Indians to win here tonight, my key to victory, brought to you by Hockenberry Trucking and Excavating, is high percentage. You cannot settle for contested Jays against a Shelby team that can just, they defend with so much length as we were just talking about. So if you can get it inside where this team shoots a very high percentage on the season, over 53%, could just be the Indians night yet again. And I'm going to go with handling the pressure. The two guys that tend to have the basketball in their hands the most for Shawnee are the Berkeys, a freshman and a sophomore. Ooh. You can do it all season long against good competition. You've done it. Now you're talking, you're on a big stage. You're in the Sweet 16. You're here at Stroll Center, Bowling Green. Can you put the nerves to the side and play well and take care of the basketball tonight? It's going to be critical if they're going to have a chance. You got my nerves tingling with that setup there, Mark. And with that, folks, if you are watching live and free right now on our Facebook and main YouTube, due to OHSAA restrictions, this is going to be an audio cast. As soon as the game is over, we're going to stream it probably about 10 p.m. You know our coverage is the best in the entire state of Ohio. You're going to want to stick around for that. But for all you diehard fans, keep it here, and we'll keep you up to date. And with the opening tip-off, kind of a weird one. And the Whippets get tied up down on the floor. It's Baker with the basketball. And I think the referees are saying, Let, let's just run it back. Let's do that yeah, again. I'm not sure anyone had possession, so I think we're going to jump again after a jump ball to start the game. And they're going to put the two guys in the center circle that were part of the jump ball. 
feel like we're going back about 20 years here. Forget the alternate possession, throw it up and let's tip it off. So we've got Bryson Baker jumping off here against Dominic Lynch. It's Lynch this time with the tap and we are underway here. Shawnee with the basketball first and here is the freshman, Trevik Berkey. Well, the first set Shawnee's gonna run is a four round one in the high post. They're gonna screen a lot. Goldsberry, number 34, simply stands at that free throw line and sets screens. But it's Beckett, Berkey, left-handed drive. The sophomore loses the handle out of bounds, and it's a turnover to start things off here for the Indians. Well, first possession of the game was a turnover, just like we talked about. Can they handle the pressure? At the other end, Shelby, a couple of handoffs. Now to the corner, Baker looking inside. They've got the Mr. Ohio finalist with the kick out. And now it's Ramsey down the lane, right hand, left side, missed it. Tapped out to Lance, sidewinding shot comes off the front of the rim. But good start for Shelby, ran a nice action there, cross screen, post entry to Russ Scotter, wasn't opened on the double team, so he kicked it out. It just didn't get the shot to go. Lynch with a rocker dribble, has to pick up his bounce. Baker defending there. And now we'll get a two-man game up top. Berkey around the back, and he gets his pocket pick. Russ Scotter down to the ground. And what do we got? It's going to be tie up, jump ball. And we see Shelby defensively starting it with Russ Scotter on Alex Goldsberry. Goldsberry is by far the weakest offensive player for Shawnee. Alex has been in some foul trouble in some games. So right away here, Shelby's putting him on the, the worst offensive player to try to maybe save him a little bit, let him be a helper. Lance baseline drive, two-handed throw down, Whippets on the board first. Wow, what a drive by Casey Lance. Meanwhile, it's a third straight turnover for Shawnee. Ramsey, skip pass opposite side. And now Bruss got her slowing things down. Hands off, here's Lance, who just had the awesome blow by. Finds Baker all alone, it's four zip. Well, Shawnee better be careful. This thing could be over in a hurry. Shelby has come out playing fast and focused. Whippets picking up full court man to man. As Lynch now walks it across the timeline. Looking to clear it out here on the right side as he gets it into the hands of Beckett. Now opposite wing for Shawnee. Slips through the hands up top here of Goldsberry. And again, when Goldsberry catches, Alex can just be a helper. Baseline drive for Berkey and we'll get a blocking foul. It was Lance. Moved his feet pretty well. Lance was matched up with Beckett Berkey while Ramsey was with Trevick. So just over two minutes come off the clock here. Whippets with a four zip advantage as Berkey, nice hesitation, right hand, tough shot. And an offensive rebound, Goldsberry turned away. Swatted inside by the Whippets. Baker spinning inside, contact, and he lays it in with the left hand. Well, the transition game looking really good for Shelby. They are in attack mode, and Shawnee just simply has no answer at this point. Bryson Baker, one of the unsung heroes, five points per game, the average. He's got four of the six. Whippet's doing a great job on that opposite side pin down. They're getting through that screen, trailing tightly and they are just there on every single catch so far tonight. This is Nick Passion, a couple of looks inside, didn't make the pass. So Shawnee reverses opposite end now with Lynch. They'll set up short corner, quick shot. Well short, it's an air ball there from Nick. And here come the Whippets again in transition. Lands straight to the rack, the step through, deflected. Almost kept right, alive by Bruscott, but here comes Beckett Berkey. Casey's got to be careful not to get his second foul here. What do we got? Foul on the floor. I think this is going to be the second on Casey Lance. Almost a travel. I think they called it on DeVito. So like, a break there for the Whippets. Yeah. yeah, Casey was kind of bumping him as they went down the court. I was afraid he was going to get his second foul there. And Lance tips off the inbounds right into the Shelby bench. So that's where Berkey will have to throw it in. On a lot of the sideline out of bounds actions, look for Shawnee to try to get some kind of drive and kick for a corner three. Goldsberry from the right wing, throws it to nobody in particular, and it's out of bounds. 
So a really slow start here for the Indians. No points three and a half minutes in. So we'll get a timeout. It's going to be a full. And Lima Shawnee wants to talk things over. To Ted and Allie's Cafe timeout. And I think you got to be really impressed if you're a Shelby fan so far. Three of five from the floor. Missed their only three. But defensively right now, Mark, four turnovers and only three shot attempts for the Indians. The pressure has definitely affected Shawnee so far. As you said, four turnovers, and they've been very careless kinds of turnovers. Shelby's doing a good job on the defensive end, but Shawnee's just making some bad decisions, turning the ball over, and it's allowed Shelby to jump out to this early 6-0 lead. If you're watching live and free on our Facebook or our main YouTube, drop us some comment bombs. We will feature you in the fan zone here tonight. Back to the action begins with Bruss Goddard. Shelby moves it opposite side. Great diagonal pass to Vito all alone. Well, that's just too easy if you're Shawnee. DeVito on the wing just makes a simple cut to the block. Found him for the easy layup. Braden DeVito with his first points of the night on a lot of teams. He'd be the featured player. As there's a runner here by Shawnee. Left hand there by Trevick Berkey. And it's tipped out of bounds. One and done yet again for the Indians. Well, and if you're Shawnee, you may want to change something defensively. When they played Lima Senior this year, they played a diamond in one and face guarded senior's best player. I thought we may see some kind of gimmick type of defense tonight against Shelby. This man-to-man -man right now has not been effective. Russ Goddard from the top of the key. Gets a little bit of space. Now Baker kicking it up top. Ramsey, one dribble, hands off to Vito. And now Lance down the lane, tried to collect his own miss, but it's tipped out. Russ Goddard keeps it alive, finds Casey underneath, and he's swatted by Berkey. But just relentless on the glass. Shelby goes and gets another chance with another offensive rebound. DeVito, a fall away. Took it down the lane like a fullback. Shawnee with the rebounds. And now Lynch handling with Baker on him. Almost five minutes in, Shawnee still scoreless. Still trying to figure out the best way to attack this half-court man-to-man pressure of Shelby. Here's Tate Bender off the bench, and he loses it. Another giveaway, the fifth. Casey Lance open, running the floor. And there it's a second dunk, Mark. Just runs the floor, great dish. Casey elevates and finishes. What a playmaker he's become the second half of the season. Got out of his own head, and he is just playing free, beautiful basketball here tonight. Well, everybody that's watched Casey knew the talent was there, and he's just let it loose, and he is starting to play so well here. Meanwhile, Beckett Berkey, but at the other end, Lance with an excellent catch like a wide receiver, and he matches quickly. Russ Cotter with a three-quarter court pass. Lance just outrunning Shawnee down the floor. Wild here we go again. Shot. Dominic Lynch, Lance with another catch in the left hand. Shelby is just too quick for Shawnee. Whippets killing them up and down the floor. Athlete for athlete, Shawnee looks like they're in trouble. The transition game has just been terrific so far for Shelby. Berkey, two hops off the rim, Bruscotter with the board. And another one and done, and here comes the Whippets in transition. The rebounding margin, seven to three in favor of Shelby, who gets a three, it's good from Ramsey, but an offensive foul, whoa, big call. That was late. Russ Cotter drove it down the line, lane line, pitched out to Ramsey for the three. Late call. They called the charge. So that could have been kind of a back-breaking type of three right there. 17-2. They'll wipe the three points off the board and also results in a foul on Mr. Ohio nominee. Now you see Shelby extending with their 2-2-1 trap. See if they can create additional turnovers. Continue to get out in transition. Leads to a jump shot. Comes up well short for Tate Bender. Well, the when, when you get a shot that quick that's a bad shot, it's just like a turnover. Carson Holman just checked in. He's fouled on the floor. He made it underneath. And how big has this kid been? 
coming in as the sixth man during the tournament. Well, Carson has been another one that has just emerged as a difference maker down the stretch here. It sure looked like Carson elevated and got fouled on that. Instead of stepping to the line for a three-point play, though, Whippets take it out of bounds. They'll get a Ramsey three front iron. Long rebound out to Berkey. He'll get picked up by Ramsey. Big hop step down the lane. Rims out, collects his own miss. Second opportunity, no bueno either. Whippet basketball. Well, and you've also seen an adjustment by Shawnee where they're only sending two or three guys to the offensive glass. They're making sure they're getting at least two guys back in transition just because of the effectiveness of the Whippets transition game. So Berkey still scoreless on the night. Averages, as we showed you in the pregame, better than 21 per game. Russ Goddard, mid-range, buckets. And it looked like he even got fouled. But Russ Goddard with a stop and pop. 14-point cushion now for the number two team in the state of Ohio in Division II. And the defensive pressure might get a 10-second call. Well, a great hustle play there by Tanner Hartz. Did get the steal, but good job of getting a piece of it. And then at the other end, back in, Berkey absorbs the contact, drops it in. He's headed to the free throw line for an old-fashioned three-point play. And right in front of the Shelby student section, they're like, wasn't that a charge on our guy at the other end? I think consistency is what they're looking for, and, and they're not very happy with that call. So we'll see if this gets Berkey going. Excellent free throw shooter on the season, 75%, and got to the line mark. That's his 184th attempt. As we said, he, he does a lot of things very well, and he's able to create contact, get himself there. Whippet lead cut to 11. 11, Whippets are going to hold it here for the last shot. Got to spread out five wide. Russ Goddard with the screen. Off the kick out, a wide open shooter to Vito. Nothing but net. Well, you don't have to take the last one when you get one that wide open. Berkey at the horn, off the front iron, and that will do it for first quarter action. Shelby explodes, 19-5, they lead as we head to the second. If you're a fan of the Shelby Whippets, you can't ask for a much better start than what they had there in that opening frame. 19-5, Berkey though! Immediately heading to the free throw line. Buckets and a chance for more. Well, looking at that first quarter, Shawnee showing a little frustration. Five turnovers, only 12%, I'm sorry, excuse me, 16% from the field. Shelby's done such a good job with their active hands and just being so active on the help side. He'll miss it off the back of the rim, though. So no three-point play. And, and now you see the box in one. You see the change up on defenses. Casey Lance battling underneath. Boy, he has been a bully in the interior. Eight early points here for Casey. Got four rebounds as well as a quick three. Back iron one and done. Holman grabs another rebound. his second in just a couple of minutes. Okay, so as we thought, maybe you see the gimmick defense boxing one. They're trying to deny Bruscott or the basketball. 
Now they change up a little bit. And Casey lands his first mistake off the handoff, lost the handle off of the shin, and it's out of bounds over to Lima Shawnee. Well, Shawnee started out in the box in one, then it looked like they were switching to a triangle in two. Whatever defense they were in ended up being effective, creating the turnover. Ramsey steps up to collect Trevick Berkey full court, putting a little pressure on the freshman. They'll insert the offense here at the foul line. Kick it back up top. Here comes Beckett off the drive. Left hand switches. A little too much. Tipped up. And Bruscotter flies in. He's fouled as he hits the deck. One well, the great thing about what Shelby's doing defensively with Bruscotter guarding Goldsberry is it allows Alex to be a helper. So whenever Berkey's get downhill and start going towards the basket, thinking they're going to get a good look, you've got 6'7", Alex Bruscotter sliding over and just standing there and being a good helper, that's something that they don't see or probably haven't seen all year. Big credit to Greg Galloway for making that decision here on the defensive end. Handoff to Bruscotter from Ramsey. He's going to pull up from the foul line. Hits softly off the rim and skying in for the board is Trevick Berkey. Mid-range J. Little too much and tipped out of bounds off the Indians. Again, it's another quick shot there by Shawnee. They're not running a lot of offense that's been effective, so they're putting up some quick shots, which has worked right into Shelby's favor. Whippets will start in the hands of Bruscotter. Phil initiate with the pass to Ramsey. Circle cut through. They'll clear it out. Here's Alex going to the rack. Lots of contact. A late whistle comes in. And Bruscotter will shoot to Dominic Lynch, picking up the personal. Well, good idea there by Alex. That last dribble, he just needed to go diagonal to create some space. He was able to get the call, but as he drove it, he caught himself caught a little bit behind that backboard. That last dribble, just one diagonal step, and he's able to pin that defender, get his chest, or excuse me, his shoulder right into his sternum and maybe get the and one. Bruscotter strokes the first. Got such phenomenal shooting touch since the time he was in middle school. And he's only grown about a couple inches since he, he came onto the high school stage with big expectations and a big body. Well, and you have to give him credit. I, if you read the articles this week by Jake Furr, talked about how when Alex was in seventh grade, he didn't play a lot. And he was just determined that he wanted to play and found a love for the game and just worked at it. And the results have paid off because he has become an outstanding player, not just in Shelby history, but you know, throughout the state of Ohio. A finalist for Mr. Basketball. Found that out just yesterday, so big kudos to Alex, his family, and his teammates. Whippets with the basketball, Lance styles up a three, and he's off target a little bit. Berkey with the board. When you can see why Shawnee was successful this year, the Berkey brothers, they, they do a good job of getting to the glass, boxing out and going and finishing. They're long and athletic. But they get a throwaway here by Beckett. Other end and an offensive foul. The second time we've seen that, it's Ramsey who picks it up, stepping in and taking the contact, Tate Bender. Well, great job there by Bender. He saw Isaiah was out in transition. He just beat him to the spot, stood there and took it. Official agreed with him. And Shawnee Ball trailing by 16. And they'll break the full court pressure into the hands of Bender now. He's going all the way to the rack. Missed it in tight. Boy, that was point blank range. So Bruscotter with the basketball feeds inside Isaiah. He also misses a bunny. Well, great cut. Isaiah was looking at Alex the whole way. He saw it. Beautiful pass. Just didn't go down. Oh, great dish inside but trying to get a better shot, Dominic Lynch. Casey Lance can't make the catch, but man, he's been going deep. This has been like some NFL stuff. Well, he has just run the floor so well tonight. And as you see on the replay there, Bruce Goddard with that defense you talked about, it, it's been really affecting the gameplay for Shawnee, how he's just, he's kind of playing that center field. A absolutely, and, and again, even though Shelby's 2-2-1 pressure 
didn't create a turnover. It's just creating the tempo that Shelby wants. They're just dictating the flow of this game. They want to post up here for Berkey. Becky gets pushed out. Lance on the defense. He's got one foul so far. Becky loses his footing, and it's going to be a turnover right in front of the Red Rage. If you're Shawnee, it's not an excuse at all. But you have your best two players, a freshman and a sophomore, who are handling the basketball against seasoned veteran defenders in Isaiah Ramsey and Casey Lance. That It's just such a hard matchup for Shawnee against such good players. These they, four seniors for Shelby, they played a ton of basketball, Mark. So is this sophomore DeVito a little bit short with a three from the corner. Trevick Berkey, great dish. Sets up a three, and this one short from Nick Passion. But an offensive rebound. They'll get it inside for Beckett. Lays it in, left hand. Easiest look they've had all night. Beautiful look by Dominic Lynch. Saw the player open underneath. Quick pass, was able to get it to go. I'd like to see Shelby get back to attacking the basket. And right on cue, big size advantage. Bruscotter over Dominic Lynch, listed at 6'1". Bruscotter now 6'8 in the senior campaign. Draws the foul, he'll head back to the free throw line. Bruscotter with four points already, seven rebounds tonight, Mark. He is cleaning up inside. They are cleaning up the glass, out-rebounding Shawnee 19 to 10 so far. Shawnee simply can't get anything to drop on the offensive end, just four of 21 from the field, including 0 of 2 from 3. Alex drills them both. The lead swells up to 25-9, 16 points to diff as we're past the midway point here of quarter two. Isolation for Shawnee, clearing out one side of the floor, trying to run that high curl cut. Shelby again does a great job on it. So they'll try an opposite side, tough pass out to the wing, Lynch with a one-handed catch. Makes a series of moves inside, but Baker swats him. Well, great job there by Bryson. Moving his feet, kept his body in front of him. Used his chest to chest off the drive. Gets a piece of it. Ball goes out of bounds. Looked like it was Shelby's ball, but they're going to give it to Shawnee. Passion gets it in before the five seconds. And now Beckett Berkey directing traffic. It's been a tough matchup with Casey Lance on him. But Berkey has all nine of their points. Just not getting any help. Baby Bro throws one up in traffic. Another block shot for the Whippets. And a fall away for Beckett from the foul line is pure. Well, you can see why everybody was raving about this sophomore. He is an outstanding player. He's battling, trying to just put his team on his shoulders. 11 points for him on the night. Five rebounds to go along with it. As Lance gets inside over the left shoulder, he's down, he looks like he's injured. Boy, Lance fell on his left wrist, writhing in pain. Indians looking to capitalize, five on four. Berkey takes it in, he'll lay it in with the left hand. And now Casey grabbing his right ankle, so not a good sign for the Shelby Whippets. As the trainer comes sprinting out onto the floor, Casey Lance down in a heap. As you see the replay, the Paul's drive-in replay of the fall away swish from Beckett. A couple possessions back. And you always just, you hate seeing this anytime big time athletes. You train all year. Lance has been healthy throughout the entire season. So you hope that he's able to bounce up shake off this pain and get right back into the lineup because his effectiveness getting up and down the floor. Top score for the Whippets right now with 10. He's got six boards already, two more. Yeah, 10 points, six rebounds, two assists. He's been doing a little bit of everything tonight. When he drove it into the, the basket, he was able to elevate. It looked like he got bumped, came down on that right ankle. He's struggling as he limps off the floor. Casey's parents up there just probably saying a couple of Hail Marys. 
telling me a couple of weeks ago he's really just he's so comfortable now in his own skin I mean the, the kids shot up like four inches this year pressing a little bit early on in the season feeling like I, I want to go earn that scholarship and you can tell now Mark he's carefree he's just out here playing basketball with his boys and this is one of the best starts I think he's had all year so with the injury Carson Holman will check in Talked about Holman earlier, giving such good minutes to the Whippets. High-low set. And it leads to Ramsey, deep two. Bruscotter the tip out. DeVito collects, so another offensive rebound for Shelby. Holman puts it up, short corner, knocks he, it down. He loves that spot on the floor. He's, even though he had the mismatch, he stepped out, caught and faced, was able to get it to go. Takes the lead back to 14. Under 90 seconds to play, Holman steps into the passing lane, looking to go coast to coast. Turned away at the front door. Big block by Alex Goldsberry, who comes up with the interception. What a sequence there for the 6'4 senior. And it leads to Berkey, smashing a three from the corner. Huge sequence for Shawnee. Well, Shawnee has life. It looked like they were down 14, getting ready to give up a transition layup. Instead, they get the block, go to the other end, and convert on the three the closest they've been for a while. Down to 11 as Bruscotter holding the ball at midcourt. They're going to force Shawnee to come out and defend as he calls Holman for the on-ball screen. But this is what you love about having a senior-laden, experienced group. Shawnee's made a little bit of a run. We're under 45 seconds, under 40 seconds now. Alex Bruscotter and the seniors from Shelby simply bring the ball out. They're going to make sure that they get the shot they want here to end the half and try to curb some of this momentum from Shawnee. Now it's Ramsey with the basketball. He's not going to get picked up. A lot of space being given by Beckett Berkey, who's got all 16 Shawnee points, Mark. It's amazing. Now Bruscotter checks the clock down to five, looking to go to work. Alex Bruscotter, three, four moves, gets a double, triple team, puts it up, and it rims out at the horn. But Shelby with an unbelievable start here at Bowling Green. Lead by double figures as they head into the halftime lockers. Stick around as we will return with our Hockenberry Trucking and Excavating halftime report. Mark and I will break down what we saw through two quarters of play, all of the stats that you can dream of, and I'll let you know what's on the horizon for the weekend here on the OH Report. You're enjoying live and free tournament basketball on the future local sports. Hi, I'm Always Report founder Brian Skorotsky and you've just enjoyed first half action live and free exclusively right here on the OH Report. But stick around, still plenty more to come right here as our boys high school basketball returns after this. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. If you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. More than Crown, we are the real people behind Crown CDJR of Dublin. Every member of our sales team is dedicated to providing you 
and excellent customer experience. Find the right vehicle for you and your lifestyle. Visit Crown Crasher Jeep Dodge Ram today. The better way to buy. You are enjoying live and free tournament hoops right here on the OH Report. Thanks to our abundance of generous sponsors and a big shout out to the Shelby community coming together. They know they got a big time team this year. They are supporting them right here on our channels. Thank you to Shelby Mutual Insurance Agency providing insurance for all your needs. Contact Shelby Mutual Insurance Agency for auto, home, life, and business insurance. Carruthers Pest Control, if you got a pest, call the best at 419-342-6841. Arcelor Middle, smarter stills for people and planet. They are hiring right now, competitive wages and benefits. Visit arcelormiddle.com and click careers for more details. Hockenberry Trucking and Excavating, your one-stop shop for limestone, gravel, dirt, sand, excavation services, and custom hauling. Paul's Drive-In, great food, even better ice cream since 1956. Ted and Allie's Cafe, a family tradition that still continues to grow strong 35 years later. Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, some want it to happen, some wish it would happen, Crown makes it happen. Mechanics Bank, Richland County's only independent community bank. Scout Construction Services, LLC. They've got more than a decade of business, so you can trust Scout with your roofing and siding needs. Call Scout Construction for more info at 419-989-7240. So we'll bring it back here in just a moment. We will have your halftime report presented by Hockenberry Trucking and Excavating. See you in about a minute. Hi, I'm Always Report founder Brian Skorowski, and you've just enjoyed first half action live and free exclusively right here on the OH Report. But stick around, still plenty more to come right here as our boys high school basketball returns after this. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. 
And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh. Thank you. We (laughs) hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. More than Crown, we are the real people behind Crown CDJR of Dublin. Every member of our sales team is dedicated to providing you an excellent customer experience. Find the right vehicle for you and your lifestyle. Is a Crown Crasher Deep Dodge Ram today the better way to buy? on the fabulous campus of Bowling Green State University inside the Stroh Center. And this is the Hockenberry Trucking and Excavating Halftime Report. Brian Skaronski hanging out with Mark Bollinger tonight courtside. And boy, what a performance by the Shelby Whippets here tonight. Got off to a phenomenal first quarter run, Mark. They carried it on into the second, but you really also got to credit the Indians and especially their sophomore standout for getting back into the basketball game. This could have been game over pretty early. It could have been game over. The tempo was definitely to Shelby's liking. They came out with the great start, exactly what they wanted, set the tone early, but give credit to Shawnee. They survived the Shelby onslaught. And thanks to Berkey, they have somehow managed to keep themselves in it. And now they only trail by 11 here going to half number two. All 16 points for the Indians tonight coming from Mr. Berkey. He has been filling it up. Eight turnovers though. Shelby's capitalized on about half of those getting up and down the floor. Casey Lance, I mean, he was a monster sprinting, filling his lane. He got three layups at the rim, a couple of dunks, Mark. All of his points have come at point blank range. Well, that first quarter transition attack was some of the best basketball I've seen all season long. The Whippets were just getting out and going with it, and Lance was on the receiving end of most of that. I'm curious to see if we can get Shelby back into that attack mode, whether it's in transition or even the half-court game. They were relentless in getting to the basket in that first quarter. And Casey Lance, it's a great sign for Shelby. He was out here warming up. It feels like he's moving around like normal, so he was a big factor all first half, has been this entire second half of the season. We'll see if he steps out here for the second half start. Number 10 is indeed going to be on the floor, so we'll see if that lifts the spirits here of the Whippets to start quarter number three. We've talked about Lance on the offensive end, but I'm going to be really curious to see what they do on the defensive end. He was matched up with Beckett Berkey. Berkey with all 16 points. The rest of the Indians were 0 of 13 from the field in the first half. So Shelby starts with a collision, and they'll feed it to Ramsey. Actually held scoreless in the first half. Baker spinning and winning at the dish. Little handoff there. Bryson spins and finishes. Good start there for the Whippets. Score on your first possession. Baker already over his season average. He has poured in six. Well, and Shelby switched it up now. Second half here. Isaiah Ramsey's going to be matched up with Berkey. And how about this? Alex Goldsberry pounding his way down on the block. He's able to score over Bruce Goddard. Well, Goldsberry gets about four or five points a game. Doesn't get a lot of touches on the offensive end, but he is a big, strong guy, and he just used that strength to get himself to the basket to score. Reach in foul now on the shot attempts. Lands Alex Bruce at the free throw line where he was a perfect four for four in the first half. Well, as the first half ended, Alex was lobbying the officials pretty good regarding some of the the calls that he felt like he was not getting. He thought he was getting hit on the wrist on most of his shot attempts. And here in second half, he was able to get a call early. Brush got her one of three from the floor. He's now four of five from the charity stripe, make it five of six. So the lead back up to a dozen. As they'll initiate the offense here, right side, Beckett Berkey trying to get by. 
And we'll get a reach in foul. This will go against Ramsey. Yeah, Isaiah just beat off that first dribble. Realized he was going to get beat to the basket. He reached in, tried to knock the ball away. Shelby's helpers weren't in the best position there to help him out. Rotation for Shawnee. They wanted to kick out to the corner for Nick Passion. He's missed both of his field goal attempts so far. But everybody's missed every field goal attempt, minus number 23. In tight, losing the handle a little bit into the hands right Whip. now of Shelby. Uh, Whippets had numbers, three on two. It's a bad pass, and now we're going the other way. Dominic Lynch tried to save it in bounds into the hands of Bruscotter, who finds Lance on the fly, just missed it. Well, Casey didn't elevate very well off that ankle. I think he's still a little bit hobbled. And now Bryson Baker is going to draw the personal foul. Looked like he went straight up, pleading his case. Trevick Berkey into him. And he's on the free throw line looking for his first points. Yeah, I thought Bryson did a good job of standing straight up. Berkey's the one who initiated the contact, but they give the call to the freshman. One of two on the night are the Indians. Now one of three. Trevick Berkey in that first half. 0 of 2 from the field. Did collect three rebounds. Splash is the second. Bruscotter with a head of steam. Left hand crossover. He puts in the bucket. Referee says the whistle came before the shot attempt. And this will go on the freshman, Trevick Berkey. It looked like they're going to call a foul just inside the three-point line there with the little bump. Wow, what a play design. Sets up Braden DeVito off the cut. And DeVito's had a nice night so far. Seven points for the sophomore. Also has a couple of assists. Ramsey getting in the passing lane. Showtime. Look out below. Wow, he walks out the dunk attempt. And that's the first time I've seen Ramsey miss one. Looked like he just hopped a little bit awkwardly, Mark. Yeah, that last step, it looked like he just didn't get what he stepped the way he wanted. I thought he was going to throw it down with some authority. And the Whippets heading the other way now in front of the Red Rage. Would have really got them lit. So 5-3 here in the quarter. Whippets with the slide advantage. Berkey, left hand down the lane, swatted by Ramsey, but right into the hands there of Goldsberry, who cleans it up. And that's what Goldsberry does well. He just cleans up the garbage, gets the easy stuff. Shawnee might start going more to that high ball screen, trying to create driving lanes. DeVito, quick acceleration, got to the rack, came up short with the shot. Beckett, back the other way, stripped. Lucky it's into the hands of a teammate. Who puts up a shot, he misses it, and now the second attempt is off target. Loose ball, though, back to the Indians, and it pays off. Finally, someone other than Berkey scores. It's Tate Bender from long range. Timeout, Shelby. Well, early in the game, all the hustle plays, all the energy, those plays were being made by Shelby. We've seen the momentum change. Now it's the Indians who are making those hustle plays. Ball's loose, scrambling around, results in a three. It's a Ted and Alley's Cafe timeout. Here it is, the setup straight away on the Paul's drive-in replay. As the Shelby Pet Band looking to keep everybody engaged. And you don't got to tell their student section twice. Sent us over a game plan here at the halftime as well, Mark. I love that they do this. They are as knowledgeable of a fan base as you are ever going to find. Yes, they are. We, we, we reviewed this, I believe it was when Shelby was at River Valley, they sent one over and we reviewed it. And we talked about the absolute detail that these high school kids go to for their cheering section. Front and back, unbelievable. Great job by the Red Rage. Mid-range jump shot comes up short. Bruscotter underneath, working. He just had dominant position. Bruscotter closing in on double figures. He's got nine points, nine rebounds. 
Shawnee with the back screen, down screen, illegal. Instead, I think they're going to call the hold. It will be a foul on the Whippets. I think they called it on Tanner. I think Tanner Hartz was whistled for it. And I believe that's the last foul to give here in the frame already for Shelby, number four. So Shawnee, if they're aggressive, they can get to the free throw line and try to eat away at this deficit with no time coming off the clock. So Tanner's taking over the role that Isaiah Ramsey was playing. Tanner simply almost putting his nose right on Berkey's chest, just completely face guarding him. They're going to chase him off the block here. Beckett was calling for it. He got waved off there by Lynch. Now here's Bender, picked up by DeVito. Strong first step. The help side defense for Shelby has been splendid, particularly from Bruscotter. But this time they allow the runner, and it's Berkey again. He's got 18. Well, nice job by Berkey. He knew he was being face guarded. He came off that curl cut, saw the space, and just attacked the basket and was able to get it. Braden DeVito starting to find himself in the zone with nine points as he strokes it after the pretty head fake. When it's going to be up to DeVito and some of these other guys to really step up because you can just tell Casey Lance isn't the same as he was in that first quarter. The explosiveness has gone a little bit. I think he's still being hobbled. Berkey inside, Hartz thought he drew the contact, fell down. He's asking for an offensive foul. And the basketball floats into the Shawnee student section. So they'll stop play. Holman's going to check in in favor of Baker. 3.13 remaining here in the third quarter. Ramsey will come back into the game. Lance will leave. And a big cheer matriculating throughout. The Shelby cheering section as they go back door. DeVito, a tough catch at the rack. You love it. Wow. DeVito with a great cut. Looked like they're almost throwing the lob to the 5'10 DeVito. He's that type of athlete. Tough shot inside, forced up by Lynch. And now Beckett grabs it, puts it in. He'll try to the free throw line. He's already at 20 and a chance for more as the lead. Trim down to nine. Well, he is living up to the height. 20 of their 30 so far, plus Ooh. eight rebounds. He is single-handedly keeping this Shawnee team in the ball game. Over a season average already. Scoring with 22, chance for 23, and already matched his season total with eight boards. So the sophomore, not afraid of the big stage, and Baby Bro collects an offensive rebound off the miss. Down the lane, hanging, but missing. And that's happened a bunch for Dominic Lynch tonight. He's had plenty of quality looks, but free throws are coming up now for Alex Goldsberry. He supplied some big minutes here in this third quarter. Well, one big switch that you have seen has been on the rebounding numbers. Early on, Shelby dominated the glass at both ends. Now you see that Shawnee has actually come back and is out-rebounding Shelby 25-22. Free throws in and out. Isaiah Ramsey back out on the floor. We're going to get a Ted and Ali's timeout. It's going to be taken by Coach Galloway. Now in his third season, enjoying by far the most tournament success of his career. Four and two now in the playoffs. Picked up win number 62 in that victory over Lexington. So this is a guy now. This isn't necessarily his group of kids, but he's he's groomed them over the last couple of years to form a program that has just been dominant within the MOAC and looking to get to a place where they've never been before, Mark. They've gotten to the regional semis, never further. Well, and, and no matter what kind of coaching 
you know, uh, situation it is, whether you come in and you build a program or you come in and you're there for a few years, anytime you can get to regional play and put together a season like they have, you know that things are going well and there's great chemistry between the players and the coaching staff. The players understand the vision, they understand the game plans, so complete credit to coach and, and the entire Shelby staff and this squad for what they've put together because it's been a magical run. They wanted to continue as they lead here 38-30. to 30. And Shelby's a small town as well, but it certainly feels like this group connected to the community as well. So they've got everything working in their favor. Now they just got to take care of business with an eight-point lead. Shawnee starting to make a little bit of noise. You see they're winning the quarter right now by three and make it four off the three-point play. And Alex Goldsberry now with five points all coming in the third. Well, now it's Russ Cutter with only nine so far. So see if starts to see some different sets run to try to get him some looks on the offensive end for the Whippets. Russ Cutter dribbling off his foot. It's a turnover. Shawnee to get as close as they have been since the first couple minutes of the first. But Russ Cutter darts in. He's got the steal. He's going to go end to end, and he throws it down with authority. Big time play there. Shawnee had a chance to cut into the lead to get it to four. Russ Cutter with the steal and finish. Totally redeems himself from the previous possession. Damalo Ojo with the ball picked up by Bruscotter. Now here comes Trevig Berkey. Scoop shot at the rim, missed it. Off the leak out. They'll get it ahead. And just the layup this time for Isaiah Ramsey, nothing and that, fancy. And that's what I love. Isaiah knew that it, he could probably try to throw it down, but there was risk involved. Just take the two, extend the lead. And now he gets a block shot. Smacks it out of the hands of Berkey. Looking to extend this 4-0 run on the whip. It's Baker end to end. And that's what I love to see out of Shelby. Get out and go in transition. With this group of athletes and the skill they have playing basketball, get up and down the court because Shawnee just can't match up athletically with them in the full court game. What a huge answer right here by the Shelby Whippets. Shawnee closing in, made it a seven point game. Back to back transition buckets now for the Whippets. Well, As the, Baker misses the first, but he'll get a chance for another. This last possession or two happened so fast, we didn't get a chance to talk about it, but great job, too, by Carson Homan. He ended up getting switched over onto Trevik Berkey, who's typically the main ball handler for Lima Shawnee. Did a great job defending, forced a miss. Wonderful job by a guy that typically doesn't guard a perimeter player. Meanwhile, splitting the pair is Baker. As we're closing in on one minute to go before we would get to fourth quarter action. Nice answer by Shelby after Shawnee cut the lead. Shelby on a 5-0 run. Indians, bad pass in traffic. Tried to find Nick Passion in the lane and it's thrown away by Tate Bender. Under a minute to go. Will Shelby continue to attack or will they take the air out of it? Lance from the corner, missed the three. Bruscotter, he's really upset because he got picked up by a 5'11 kid. He was about to go down low and try to body him up. Well, this is big because Shawnee has the possession arrow, so they'll start the fourth quarter with the ball. No look inside here for Berkey. Defended well by Ramsey, now opposite end. He'll get it. Isaiah falls to the floor. They call a block, and they're going to count it, Mark. Wow. Yeah, I'm a little amazed. Right here on the baseline in front of us, moving screen on that cross screen. Isaiah got picked off. Thought they were going to call that one. Instead, they let it go. They get the post up, catch, score, and call the foul on Isaiah. That's a tough sequence there for the Whippets. So Shawnee can get it down to single figures here. And this has been their man all night, Beckett Berkey. Been their dude all season, the only player for the Indians averaging in double figures. And he is at 25 now. For Shelby, end of quarter execution here. You're up nine, 23 seconds to go. Get the shot you want with, from the player you want. 
get a basket here and take it to the fourth quarter with momentum. You'll be eight minutes away from a regional championship game. Brusgunner's well, got the basketball picked up by the freshman Trevick Berkey. They'll throw the double team, reach in. And that'll be the last foul to give here by Shawnee. It's a smart idea. 3.7 seconds and Shelby will have to inbound on the side out. Going to be Baker. They'll lob it inside with the size advantage. Fall away jumper from the corner. It's short for Bruscotter, and we are headed to money time. Shelby on top by nine, looking to punch their ticket into the Elite Eight for the first time ever. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. Mark Bollinger, will you please let the people at home know what time it is? It's money time. Yeah, baby, that's right. We've got eight minutes remaining in regulation. Shawnee with the basketball, Berkey working inside. Ramsey takes a tumble. And the sophomore again back at it, he's got 27. Isaiah tried to take the charge. The official didn't call it. It left Berkey alone for an easy one. Back down to a seven point game. This is as close as Shawnee has gotten, and then Shelby made a run in the third. But here's Casey Lance, is poked away. Oh, Bruscotter can't believe it. It was gonna be Isaiah Ramsey in the rim. That was it. Check this out. And you couldn't ask for a better play from Bruscotter. When you're running in transition as a coach, you talk about reaching from the bottom so you don't hit the arm or come across the forearm. Bruscotter reaches from the bottom, flicks the ball out. The official diagonal across through traffic calls the foul. Another tough break for the Whippets. Looks like Casey Lance with the deflection up top, so Shawnee will inbound just left of their bench. And we've got a perspiration issue out on the floor. So in comes the mopping gang. Great balance so far tonight for Shelby. Russ Scotter and DeVito, DeVito each with 11, Lance with 10, Baker with 7. Ramsey's added a couple, Homan added a couple, I believe. Not as much balance on the other side, but Berkey's kept them in it. Passion gets it to him, Beckett. Step back three. Bottoms. That's nasty. I mean, you do that to one of the best defenders in North Central Ohio, maybe even in the state. And then at the other end, DeVito a little too fast with the basketball. Great look at that last pullback on the Paul's drive-in replay. I mean, just dropping bombs. It's a two-possession game, Mr. Bullinger. Well, Shelby just needs to stop here. Pretty confident the ball's going to end up in Berkey's hands. He's got the first five points here of the fourth. As Dominic Lynch backs it out, Baker picks him up. Lynch still yet to score on the season. Second leading scorer on the team with nine a game. Shawnee just continually running the open post, bringing guys off of screens. And Berkey with a tough finish. He went left side, right hand, soft touch, two point game. We need a 10 at Alley's Cafe timeout. Shelby 
sees a 7-0 spurt by the Indians start this fourth quarter. Well, college coaches, if you haven't been to Lima to see this sophomore, he is sensational. 32 on the night. Ooh. He's got great length, Mark, of course. We knew that coming into the contest. Exceptional handles. And now we see that he's also, he's got a little bit of ice running through his veins and some leadership qualities for a young guy. This is a fairly young roster as well. He's clearly the one that they've been looking for since the opening tip down on the offensive side of the floor. That's what's been most impressive. They came out and they struggled with the pressure early. Turnover, turnover, missed shot, turnover. The struggles were real. They fought their way through it and they've just continued to battle. And he has continued to just make shot after shot at crucial times. And now we're at a two point game. But if you're Shelby, you can't get caught up in the momentum and in the moment. You still have the lead by two and the basketball. Relax, play your game, run your stuff, get yourself a score here. Score, stop, score, and open this thing back up. There's the score. The finalist for Mr. Basketball, Bruscotter, just cut, made a catch, went around a couple guys and laid it in. Huge three possession series here. They got the score, can they get the stop, and they get another score to open this thing up and expand this lead. Here's we're under six minutes at Bowling Green. Isaiah Ramsey, like a fly, swats it, but Berkey collects back in the corner. It's put up again by Passion off target. Here's DeVito with the pass. Ramsey the layup at the Beautiful, other end. Beautiful, unselfish basketball by the Whippets. Exactly what they needed. Score, stop, score, and the lead goes back to six. Berkey trying to keep up, and he'll splash again. Short corner, left wing, 34 points. And it is just an absolute war underneath when shots go up. The physicality level is something that you don't see until you get to regional play or state play. It is just brutal in there. The lob it into the teeth of the defense, and a foul is going to come on the floor. Bruscott are working inside on Dominic Lynch, giving up seven inches of the matchup. And there was not a whole lot he could do. Bruscott to inbound, tried to force it inside to Baker. It's tipped and intercepted. Here's Shawnee, passion. Down the lane, pass out to Trevig Berkey. Would have been a huge shot. Rattled out. And now another foul. This will go on Tay Bender. It'll be the second on the Indians. That's another good call for Shelby. Every foul that they can create here for Shawnee. One foul closer to getting to the free throw line. We know the Whippets do a really good job of icing games or putting teams away from the line. If they can get into that situation, it'll be extremely beneficial. Russ Cotter picked up by the freshman. He's going to try to go to work. A rocker right to the lane in the layup. Little hesitation and go. The freshman had no answer for it. Great response by the Whippets. Russ Cotter starting to look for his own here in the fourth with 15. Baseline drive for Lynch off the fake. And now they'll put it back in the hands of their freshman point guard. Beckett Berkey calling for it. Ramsey fronted him and he gets the steal. Great play by Isaiah. He worked the entire possession just trying to get position. He was able to get that one foot on top of Berkey's foot. Because of that, he was able to front him and create the turnover. Coach Galloway says spread him out and we'll see if we can run some clock. Certainly is in their favor now with the six point lead. As nobody's picking up Bruscotter and he does what he should. That's one guy you might want to guard. Shawnee makes a mental mistake. Alex capitalizes. Bruscotter puts up better than 24 a game. He's got 17 now and then losing his bounds, turning it over is Bender. So the Whippets have weathered that early storm in the fourth. Looking to take command here with an eight-point cushion. Yeah, up eight, a little over three minutes to go. It could just be a, a situation where Shelby, it's just layups and free throws the rest of the way. 
Baker gets by his defender. They'll set it off in the layup again. Ramsey coming alive. Spreading the floor, attacking the basket. Ramsey flashes to the basket. Great bounce pass in the finish. All six of Ramsey's points have been layups. Brusk on her weak side. What a block there against Berkey. Now Shelby will pull it out. Good decision there by Casey Lance. Bring the ball back out. The lead has swelled back up to 10. It was two just a moment ago, folks. Score and timer in your favor. They got Bruscotter the basketball. Right down Main Street, fights it up, but missed. Whippets Rebound to Berkey. Whippets might want to take a timeout. Alex is looking tired. And there it comes from Coach Calloway, but it's a little late straight away. And splish, splash, raindrops again for the sophomore. This kid's been fantastic tonight. Yeah, and if you notice where he pulled up and shot that from, that was college level three. That was deep, but the last few possessions, Alex a little bit slow getting back. You can see he was just a little winded. Good time out there by the Whippets to just get him a breather. So it's 12-10 here in the frame. And what's really been leading Shelby all season, the three amigos I'm calling them, Mark. I love these three seniors together. How about 47 and a half points per game, almost 18 rebounds and 10 dimes for Ramsey, Bruscotter, and Lance. These three, I mean, it's a party every time they're on the floor, baby. It, it is a party, and if you're a coach, you look at that, you're like, I will take those three guys any day of the week. What a great career they've had. And now for those three, I know how important it is for this Shelby group. You're two minutes and 11 seconds away. Seven point lead with the ball. You've got control of this game. Just finish it. Everybody rising to their feet here inside of the Stroh Center. Awesome atmosphere for a big time high school basketball game. Shawnee's gonna extend the floor here off the dead ball timeout. Man pressure, see if they look to jump the ball handler, try to create a turnover. They clear out for Lance, has to pick up his bounce. And now they'll find Baker. Ramsey's got the quickness advantage up top with Goldsberry on him. And he'll find DeVito wide open on the cut. Exactly what you want to do, layups and free throws. Last two possessions, the Whippets have been able to get layups. Beckett gets to his spot, misses, but somehow collects it and goes right to the left hand. He does a great job of finishing with the left hand. Missed the three, didn't quit on it, attacked the basket, and finished over Bruscotter. What a treat it's been tonight watching Beckett Berkey fill it up for 39 and 11. But the last few possessions have been a win for Shelby. You're down to a, under a minute 30, and you've kept the seven-point lead, and you have the ball. So a minute has come off the clock. Score and time haven't changed a lot, except the clock's just continuing to go in your favor. Great ball movement again, and Casey Lance, the recipient underneath off the setup from DeVito. Yep, spread the floor, attack the basket. Backside flash to the basket. Starting to get down to crunch time. Another block shot this time, coming with a foul attached to it on Ramsey. But that's okay, you can exchange twos. Don't let him shoot the three. Put the ball on the floor, drove it to the basket, send him to the line, make him earn the two. Worst case scenario, you're still up by seven and now we're down to just over a minute. So Beckett Berkey at the free throw line. Great touch, Cash is in the first. Shawnee gets in to Malo Ojo. Defensive substitution here. Most important thing for Shelby right here, box out on a missed rebound. You have to get the defensive rebound. So trims it down to seven. And now Shawnee looking to run and jump. Whip it's able to break the pressure. DeVito handling with the basketball down to 50 seconds remaining. And he'll take a bump. 
That was the last one to give here for Lima Shawnee. Well, the Whippets have done a great job of managing the time and the situation here. Can they make the right decisions to finish it out? No turnovers here. They're going to put Isaiah Ramsey on the line. Ramsey's done everything you would expect from him on the defensive end here tonight. At the free throw line with six points and a chance to add to it. Yeah, Isaiah with five steals on the evening. He hits the front iron, though, with the first offering. The most important thing, find Berkey in transition. Run him off the three-point line. Do not let him come back with threes. So off the make for Ramsey. Here comes Shawnee starting to run out of time. Down to 40 seconds. Beckett puts it up. Wild shot from the corner. And Baker secures. He'll get fouled. And you can start to fill it a little bit now, Mark. Well, Bryson Baker was there on the defensive matchup, forced the contested three. Berkey with the foul. And in an act of great sportsmanship, he apologized to Bryson there afterwards. Tommy, we didn't mean to push him the way he did. Baker with a chance here to extend it. Two makes, and we can get it to a four-possession game. And the senior knocks down the first. Well, and those seniors have been so critical. Shawnee made their run. They were able to get it to two, and then the whippets just answered. They made all the plays they needed. Splitting the pair, though, is Baker. Shawnee got it with Trevig Berkey. He'll come near side. Now for Bender, threes on the way. It's going to be short for Passion. Berkey working inside. He missed that one as well. Brusscutter chases down a long rebound. And I think the Indians see the writing on the wall. They're still pressuring, but they're not going to foul. They'll get a turnover, though. Dominic Lynch dribbles in the block shot by Baker, but a foul with 6.1 ticks. What a ball game this was. Shelby came out on fire. Shawnee was able to hang around, but man, what an answer here late in the fourth by the Whippets. And I see we've got a great viewing audience on our Facebook and our main YouTube channel. History about to be made here tonight. Already the winningest team in Shelby program history with 23 victories. About to add another to that total. And Alex Bruscotter pulls down rebound number 12. Right before the buzzer. So the Mr. Ohio nominee ends the game. 17 points, dozen rebounds. DeVito, the second leading scorer on the team tonight with 13. Lance ships in with 12. And Shelby punches their ticket to the Elite Eight to take on the number one team in the state, Mark. It's going to be a great matchup Saturday. Unfortunately, it's a regional final matchup, number one and number two. This is the kind of game you wish would take place at the final four in the state championship. But unfortunately, they had to come together, and it's going to be the top two dogs in Division Two going at it on Saturday. But it's these dogs moving on here, the Shelby Whippets. We'll be back, though, here at the Stroh Center. We'll take a timeout. We will have everything you want to see from the press conference room here tonight. And then Mark and I will wrap things up with our MVP and our Huckleberry Trucking and Excavating Post Game Show. Check you out in just a couple minutes.
Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. If you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. More than Crown, we are the real people behind Crown CDJR of Dublin. Every member of our sales team is dedicated to providing you an excellent customer experience. Find the right vehicle for you and your lifestyle is a Crown Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram today. The better way to buy. Shelby Whippet fans, you are moving on to the Elite Eight for the first time in program history, and you watched it all go down live and free thanks to these unbelievable sponsors. Uh, big shout out to the Shelby Car Wash. Wash away your worries at the Shelby Car Wash. And they had a few there in the fourth quarter, but they were able to overcome them. Big thank you to Shelby Mutual Insurance Agency, providing insurance for all your needs. Contact them for your auto, home, life, and business insurance. If you got a pest, call the best. 419-342-6841. Get a hold of my guy Jack at Carruthers Pest Control, and they will get rid of all the different little rodents and pests that are giving you problems. Arcelor Middle. Smarter steals for people and planet. They are hiring now with competitive wages and benefits. If you visit ArcelorMiddle.com and click Careers for more details, you'll see everything they have available. A thank you to Hockenberry Trucking and Excavating, your one-stop shop for limestone, gravel, dirt, sand, excavation services, and custom hauling. Paul's Drive-In, great food and even better ice cream since 1956. Ted and Allie's Cafe, a family tradition that still continues to grow strong 35 years later. Crown Chrysler, Dodge Jeep Ram, some want it to happen, some wish it would happen, Crown makes it happen. Mechanics Bank, Richland County's only independent community bank. 
and Scout Construction Services, LLC. With more than a decade of business, you can trust Scout with your roofing and siding needs. Call Josh Mobley at Scout Construction for more info at 419-989-7240. And last but not least, a big shout out to Miss Angela Phillips and the people over at Phillips Tube Group, one of the best businesses in all of Shelby. We are waiting for players and coaches to end up at the podium. When they get there, we will return and have your Hawkenberry Trucking and Excavating post-game show. See you in a bit. or something like that so I just wanted to kind of control the game and uh, limit <clears throat> possessions especially for them and for us to get long um, like with good movement make them grind it out for a stop um, and kind of use the clock as our friend and then when they went on that run cut it to two with like five minutes left um, I mean I've before that I was seeing gaps like driving lanes but I was just passing it just trying to get movement and uh, waste a little bit of time but then I um, once it got to two I kind of figured that we needed to um, stretch the lead out a little more and um, started attacking those driving lanes yeah obviously um, you know we had a, a big focus on Beckett um, we wanted to, to try to make things tough for him and I don't, what did he end up with? 41, 41 man. And, <laughs> and when I look at those shots that he made, I, I thought we did a good job making them tough shots. And that, that was our goal. You know, if I saw 40, if you would have told me 41 on the, the box score before the game, I, you know, I don't think I would be this comfortable right now. But, um, you know, he, he's a special player. We had a, a big focus on them. We wanted to speed them up early. We, usually with us getting a fast start, it, is up has to do with our defense. So we pressured them a little bit early. We were able to get some seals and turnovers and play at our style. So um, it's something that is part of our identity defensively. And, uh, you know, we wanted to stay true to that tonight. Alex, this is your guys' first regional championship game in 67 years. Just your thoughts on that. I mean, that's, I mean, that's grandpa's age kind of thing. I mean, that, that's pretty cool. It is really cool. And then seeing all the people in the stands um, coming out to support, I mean, the, the support system was great tonight. We were loud. Um, bad call. The ref definitely knew it. Our fans were screaming. Um, but, no, it's, it's super special, um, especially, like, seeing this hasn't been done in 67, the fans realizing that and, and showing out and um, giving us the best shot of, um, of completing this and getting the state. Uh, it, it really means a lot to me and my team. Coach, just talk about your team's resiliency a little bit there in the fourth quarter. Obviously, they go on that 10-0 run. I think they were just starting to make some of those shots and maybe didn't fall in the first half a little bit. Talk about the resilience of your guys and just how they, you took that time out. Everybody settled down. Uh, obviously, you know, you talk about it a little bit. You, you go to the 
your guy there gets three big buckets in a row. So just talk about your team's resiliency today and how they really can just kind of mature throughout the whole game, really. Yeah, relentless is a word that we, we talk about a lot in our program. It's one of our core values. And, um, you know, I define that as, and we define that as a group as, you know, being able to overcome obstacles and on the floor it's next play mentality and we challenged our guys um, they went on runs we called timeouts we regrouped and I credit the resilience and the relentless mindset to to our veterans uh, we've been in this situation before not down 17 and a half this year and came back we, we've we've grinded out games on the road so it wasn't a panic mode for our guys because we've been in that situation before and it's a credit to guys like him and and the rest of our veteran group to just bounce back when we needed to. Your thoughts on Luper and West, Coach? They're really good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll just say that. Uh, you know, we got to see them. We went to OG for a, a classic earlier this year. They played before us. Um, you know, obviously, we came before the game to watch. Uh, they do a lot of good things, and it's not one, it's not two, it's a lot of guys on the floor. Um, but I mean, this is this is what we asked for um, at the beginning of the season. That's why he's put in a lot of shots to play in games like this Saturday. And uh, man, we're excited for it. We're we're gonna give him everything we got. Alex, obviously you guys really wanted this one. You know, this team has kind of gotten better in the last couple of years. So maybe just talk about how much it means to you to be able to kind of get back to this stage and knock them off, and then what it means to you to be able to put this uniform on one more time. And, you mentioned about the crowd, just maybe how special it is to play in front of this crowd one more time uh, wearing the white with this jersey there. Well, I can remember my freshman year walking out of, um, I think it was like Elida we played at, and I just remember like looking up at the crowd and being like, I, I just want to get back here. I want to get back in this environment, um, and th but this time I want to win. Like I want to go deeper. And, um, every workout I did in the off season, like every every practice, like I just I just think that I want to get to this moment again, and um, I think my teammates pick up on that, and um, I mean they're they're really motivated as well, and it's just it's been such a special year, and um, hopefully we can keep it going. Thanks, Alex. Alex, you spoke earlier in the season about what. Um, obviously it means a lot to me um, and my family just being able to experience all this and these crazy environments and these good teams but I think the most important thing is just giving a good example to the young kids especially from Shelby and just giving them a role model to look up to and that's why I, I try to be I mean I try to be smiley all the time I try to encourage young kids especially and then I think that just means that that's what it means most to me is just um helping other people out and um and giving them like uh like someone to look to um like someone that they want to be when they grow up Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. If you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you.
We are back now with your Arcelor middle most valuable player, Alex Bruscotter, senior forward for the Whippets. Uh, big time game for you here tonight, man, at both ends of the floor. You, you really, you, you own the thing. And uh, really proud to see this team move on to the Elite Eight for the first time ever. So having that emotion, all the fans here in your corner, just describe what it's like to punch your ticket and moving on to Saturday's game. Obviously, it feels amazing. We've been wanting this the whole year. And we've been. This is what we've been working for. Moments like these, and now we have a uh, we have a chance to make it to date in one of our goals, and it, it feels really good to do it against a good Shawnee team and to uh, close it out with without a doubt. Definitely felt like experience matters in this contest tonight. The three amigos and your four seniors out here. I mean, you guys put on a show, I think. And even though Berkey lit it up, nobody else for them really did much. So just tell me about just kind of your guys' four seniors and how you felt like you collectively made a big difference here tonight as a unit. Well, we kind of, in the first half, we, Berkey had 16. He's really good. Um, he plays for the Buckets, so I already knew him a little bit. But we were kind of just like, I mean, if he scores 60, we will probably lose. So... But, I mean, we held the role players in check. And then, yeah, on offense, uh, we really controlled the game. We got good shots a lot. Um, the, the fourth quarter, they started a little comeback. And then I thought we, we um, locked back in defensively, especially, and uh, forced them into some tougher shots and, and rebounded better. Given the veteran leadership that you guys have, they cut it down to a two-point game there in the fourth quarter. You call a timeout. You instantly went to the rack. You got a bucket, and I think you guys went on like a 7 nothing run. So just describe what it was like in the heat of the moment at that time when you see your lead dwindle, and then you had to make some plays, and you do. Well, going into the fourth, we had an eight-point lead. So my mindset was kind of just like, let's get long offensive possessions, good ball movement, uh, make them grind it out, use the clock as our friend. And then they cut it down to two. And I was seeing driving lanes when we were when I was just passing it um, early in the fourth. Then they cut it down to two, and I started taking those driving lanes, and um, and finishing off two. And then I thought that kind of sparked us, especially our defense. Then we just started playing harder, and um, and then they had to start fouling and all that. So, yeah. While tonight was certainly about the team and the community of Shelby, you were nominated for Mr. Basketball yesterday. Not a whole lot of kids get that experience for their entire life. So to be recognized as one of the top players at the tippy top in the state here, just how gratifying is it knowing that all the hard work you put in, like it's being noticed? Well, I'll enjoy that later. I want to I wanna get to state for right now. Um, personal awards, I'll, I'll look at after the season. But my main focus is, it is on uh, Lou West now, and it's going to be a tall task. Um, so, I mean, we're just going to give it our all. Yeah, number one versus number two in the state going to be going down here on Saturday. Your opportunity to get to Dayton, you got to go through the best team that is determined by OHSA here in the tournament. So, to have that opportunity in front of you here in just a couple of days, I imagine you guys are going to be very excited for it. But for the Whippets to do it and get it done here at BG again, what does it take? Well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a lot. Um, obviously, everything we have laser focus tomorrow at practice and just everybody locked in um, and we're just gonna have to play really hard enjoy the moment um, I mean Shelby's gonna bring in a great crowd hopefully and just we're really excited to be in this opportunity especially Lou West I mean number one team arguably in the state so uh, I mean we got our we got our work cut out for us and and uh, hopefully hopefully we're up for the challenge I like how you said arguably because the Whippets now won 18 straight games, man. And what's been really cool is that my MVP here at Districts and then now it's been three different players, three different seniors. But now your moment has come for the shout outs. Give them up, Alex. Um, well, I heard uh, I heard K-Mac Travels, you know, watching the game. So, you know, I got to shout my boy out there, even though he forgot my name the other day on TV. <laughs> but uh, shout out the whole Shelby community. Um, they were great. I mean, if the ref made a bad call, they definitely let them know. They were loud and um, just great support. We've had great support throughout the whole tournament. And um, shout out for Casey for that highlight dunk in the first quarter. So. Yes, sir. All right, Alex Bruscotter, your Arcelor Middle MVP, a little goodie bag for you. Thank and hopefully more to come as the tournament progresses. Thanks for the time, bro. Thank you.
Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. If you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. Back here inside the Stroh Center for the Hockenberry Trucking and Excavating Post Game Show. I am Brian Skronsky alongside Mark Bollinger, who we're just hanging out courtside tonight for a really competitive game. It didn't look like it was going to be early on in this one. Shelby, the experience, they get off to an unbelievable start. Shawnee, thanks to a heroic effort, they push there late. But I think just with the veterans that they have on this Whippets team, they were able to make the plays down the stretch. Didn't seem like they got rattled, Mark, and they get it done. Well, experience matters. Shelby came out, was off to a great start, led by Casey Lance. Lima Shawnee hung around, give those guys a ton of credit. They continued to battle. They were extremely resilient. But then once they cut it to two, that experience paid off. The Shelby seniors, those experienced players, made the right plays at the right time, and they were able to open it back up. And because of that, they're going to move on to the Elite Eight. And while Alex Bruscotter was our MVP and is the Mr. Ohio nominee right now, it was overwhelmingly just the balance and the number of guys that got involved for Shelby tonight that helped them punch their ticket to the Elite Eight. Well, we talked about balance in the pregame, and Bruscotter led him with 17, but you look through the numbers, whether it was the scoring, the rebounding, it was just balance across the board, complete team effort tonight for the Whippets. Totally different scenario on the other side tonight, but one of the best individual games that I've seen, certainly in a regional game ever. So Beckett Berkey, I mean, we got to applaud the kid. He put the city on his back and he almost brought them all the way back. Well, if you don't know of Beckett Berkey, say hello because the young man dropped 41 tonight and he was not just a volume shooter. Wow. He was an efficient scorer. Ended up 17 of 32 from the field. Wow. Just great performance, battled all night long. Uh, just outstanding individual effort. Just wasn't enough for Beckett to overcome that entire Shelby squad. So Shawnee, their season comes to rest. Eight straight wins for them, though, coming into the tournament. And 10 of 11, they had won. They're only lost in that stretch to OG within uh, the Western Buckeye League. So obviously another quality season for Lima Shawnee program that's been playing really, really well, Mark. So I think you got to applaud what they've been doing. They've been getting to the regional round quite a bit here lately and another one with a young roster. Well, the future is bright. You know, we've talked about Berkey, 41 points tonight. He's only a sophomore and his younger brother is 6'7", six, 6'8", six, handles the ball a lot. They're going to be a force to be reckoned with over the next few seasons. But it's about Shelby this season, the number two team in the state. What a task they've got coming up here on Saturday, Mark. Well, they have a big task. They're taking on number one, Lutheran West. But the reality is when you get to this point, you're going to play somebody good. So if you're Shelby, why not take out number one Saturday afternoon and punch your ticket to the Final Four and make that trip to Dayton? That's the mission clearly right now for the Whippets. And I think that they had that belief all along, certainly since the second half of the season where they just kept collecting scalps. And now that the comeback tour here in terms of getting revenge, knocking off the Tigers, knocking off Lexington. Now they take care of Shawnee, moving on to a game where they've never been before. Everything's going to be on the line, and I'm sure this this place is going to be on absolute fire on it, Saturday. It is going to be packed with Shelby supporters, and I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of MOAC and Mansfield area supporters that are going to make the trip up here to watch the Whippets. And the best thing about it, Shelby was here tonight and watched that first game. If you read the newspaper clippings and all the media articles about Lutheran West, you can start to think that they're unbeatable. But when you watch them play tonight, you realize, you know what, they're really good, but they're also human. Shelby can come out and compete Saturday night, and there is no doubt in my mind that Shelby has a legitimate chance to win on Saturday and go to Dayton. 
arguably the number one team in the state. Alex Bruscotter said, arguably. What Amen. A Love it. Uh, that is going to wrap up our coverage, though, here tonight from the Stroh Center. If you watch on the audio cast, thank you guys so much. If this is the video version after the fact, we'll be back with the exact same coverage here on Saturday. You going to be joining me again, Mark? I will be here Saturday. Cannot wait. Uh, many, many thanks, though, to all of our generous sponsors. It seems like half of the Shelby community jumped on board for this game tonight. Big ups to Phillips Tube Group, Carruthers Pest Control, Paul's Drive-In, SMIA Insurance, Hockenberry Trucking and Excavating, Ted and Allie's Cafe, Crown of Dublin, Mechanics Bank. I got to be missing somebody. Scout Construction, thank you for all of your generous contributions to make this game happen here live and free at the regional rounds. And my amazing supporting cast here at the OH Report, Adam Thompson, our incredible director, producer extraordinaire. He figured out a lot of different things to be able to make this happen for the audio and the video tonight. So I cannot give him enough pats on the back for what he accomplished. Justin Wilson got you some incredible tight shots down on the sideline tonight. Jory Hollenbeck, the most solid top cam in the game, doing her thing up top. For Mark Bollinger, I'm Brian Skaronski saying thanks for watching. We'll see you on Saturday. We're actually going to have a double dip, Mark. Margareta and OG. That's some wow. quality basketball. <laughs> we'll see you at BG on Saturday. So long, folks.